Hi from Toronto, my name is John Kyo and welcome to another 10 by 10 series. This one is a focus on Vietnam where I'll speak to 10 experts for 10 minutes about different aspects of living and working in Vietnam and also doing business in Vietnam. And today I'm delighted to have with me Fred Burke from Baker McKenzie in Ho Chi Minh City. Hi Fred, good morning. Hi John, how are you? Good to see you today. I'm great, good to see you again. Fred, the 10 minutes goes very, very quickly. So in the first 30 seconds to one minute, can you tell us a little bit about you and also about Baker McKenzie? Okay, um, my name's Fred Burke. I founded the Vietnam offices of Baker McKenzie um, way back in the early 90s. I came in March, 1991, when I had been an um, associate up in our Shanghai office in China for a couple of years. In fact, I had joined the firm because of the great China practice I had in those days. Um, uh, I got sucked into Vietnam and there was nobody else doing it. And uh, all of a sudden from 1991 to 1993, we had the U.S. embargo that limited what we could do. But then that came off in 1994. And ever since then, I've never looked back. It's been busier and busier every year. Now we have 200 you know, lawyers and professionals um, helping us do trade and investment work here in, in Vietnam. Very focused on, on the economic law, doing investment, trade, um, project finance, employment, uh, uh, all kinds. You know, real estate, uh, intellectual property, tax, construction, uh, and right now, a lot of renewable energy, actually. Wow, that's amazing. So, you, 30 years in Vietnam, you're one of the real pioneers, right? Yeah, there were not too many. There were a couple of Americans, just a few, um, because we had the embargo, we couldn't really do much. Um, and, and it's, you know, now they say there's 100,000 expats living in Vietnam. Um, and those, they mistook me for a Russian in those days, because only here, I'm still doing a little bit of oil work. Wow, amazing. So Fred, in that 30 years, you've uh, you've been part of the change in Vietnam. So, and you've seen a lot of change, especially in the, the law and regulations. What stands out as the most significant for you? Well, I think just the, the general pragmatism and um, willingness to engage and to, to listen to um, international best practice of the government really um, been good for the country. I mean, you know, they've gone so far in such a short time. And a lot of that has been just saying, okay, you know, there's a lot of ways to do this around the world. We invite foreign experts in and open up to law firms like ours or accounting firms or other professionals who know how these things are done around the world. And then that way we can integrate with global markets, get access to export markets for our products and services. And sure enough, it's worked so well until now. Um, the, the, you know, it's just dramatic, the improvement in the quality of life here, poverty has been something everybody involved in and has been very, very proud to. The question is, what's the next step? Do they get in the middle income trap or, um, you know, or do they go on to the next step? And now recently there's been a new plan is all focused on 2045. By 2045, Vietnam's going to be a modern country. And, you know, okay, it may look like a challenge right now um, when you see how, you know, the traffic infrastructure still has a long way to go. Um, things like the court system are still behind but, um, you know, the, the pace of change leads you to believe, well, if you project that out, they can just achieve some of these great ambitions. Fantastic. And where, where is that? You mentioned that the Vietnamese government are open to uh, listening to governments from around the world and best practices. Are they also getting hints or tips from, let's say, ASEAN or from APEC or from the EU? Or is there is there one dominant force that's given them guidance? No, I think that, you know, part of the um, reason for the success is they're not bilateral. They're a very, they have a multilateral mindset. They don't want to be dependent on one country or the other for, for everything, whether it's the U.S., China, EU, or whatever. Um, they, you know, have good relations with a lot of different countries. There's some tension with China, and there's, you know, some, some probably some lingering uncertainty about the, the U.S., given its recent flip-flops in, in foreign policy. But nevertheless, I think, um, you know, especially with business, you know, they know what business is about. We're very transparent. We want to make money. We want to, you know, have a good legal system that's clear and transparent, predictable. Um, and uh, and, and that, that's understandable to them. So that's why a lot of the business groups have been very effective channels between the business community and the government. So if a company's having trouble, it turns out that the trouble they're having, saying getting something through customs, is something that a lot of other people are having too. Then they join together in these business groups like Eurocham or Amcham and and uh, it, the best one is really the Vietnam Business Forum for purposes of advocacy work and, and, and bringing issues up to the attention of the government so that they, they will, will you know, uh, reform administrative procedures or make things easier for you, reduce red tape and increase 
transparency. Those channels, you know, the prime minister will sit there for a half a day listening to businesses, you know, talk about, oh, you know, this, this circular number is 3,672. It requires me to get two copies. I should only have to get one copy. And, you know, and then, then they write it down and they go back and do it and things get better. So it's, that's sort of the nitty gritty stuff of how it works. Fantastic. That's great to hear. Now, in, in your, your time, you've seen a lot of uh, foreign businesses coming into uh, to Vietnam. What kind of struggles were they facing in the past? And I'm, I'm sure a lot of those have gone away and it's a much easier uh, country now to do business in. But what has what, what your, your experience been with the multinationals in particular? Well, I mean, a lot of the multinationals were well equipped to get into it. They had the skills to adapt to any new environment they'd find themselves in. I mean, in a lot of the ones that I was working for in the early 90s, I've been working with them in China. In the 80s, where I arrived in China in 1981, started working at this law firm in 86, and uh, you know some of the same issues, just a really different culture, really different legal system, a lot of you know suspicion about what it was in the early days. Um, um, so, so the multinationals were pretty well taken care of. It's the, the small to medium-sized enterprises that have the most trouble because they can't you know get international attention every time they have a problem or something's just not working for them. For example. You know, something in the early days that you take for granted, deductibility of interest. In the early 90s, you could not deduct interest payments. So how do you really make the financials of any investment work if you, if you can't even have leverage? So um, that took, you know, a couple of years. Well, the, the government here said, well, you're supposed to bring capital, not debt. You know, you don't want to be debt laid in third world country. We should, like, but, the, the, but the investors said, well, no, this is how it works around the world. So finally, that got, those are the kind of issues you had in those days. Very, very basic stuff and now it's more sophisticated issues. Gotcha. And, and now Fred, you, you see that there's Vietnamese companies becoming really, really big and doing some incredible work. Uh, is it VinFast? They're making cars, motorbikes and doing all sorts of fantastic stuff. So they must be maturing their uh, understanding of legal frameworks as well. Is there is there a big need or demand from the Vietnamese companies to be more, let's say, uh, regulatory savvy and, and legal savvy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, Vin, VinFast is, uh, is a great example of the ambition <laughs> that, that is here um, to, you know, go out and conquer global markets. But, you know, Viettel and you know, a lot of other groups follow Jalai out of the country to build real estate projects or distribution, uh, all kinds of things. Um, so that's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's you know, shows to the, their spirit and, you know, they, they don't want to be, um, you know, left behind. They don't consider themselves inferior to any other um, country in the region. They want to catch up with Korea and then Japan um, eventually um, and, and, you know, really be a player. So and, and your, your firm also helps companies to enter the Vietnamese market. Now, without giving away all your secrets, because that's your, your IP, what, what are the key things that firms need to watch out for coming into Vietnam if they have no experience in Vietnam whatsoever? Yeah, I suppose the main thing is that, you know, there, I think this has gotten a lot better, but, it, but there's still um, a sort of tendency to hear people say, oh, this is Vietnam, we do things differently. You just do some under the table money or something like that, you know, hire the right consultant and they'll, they'll do things on the door and then everything will get squared away. If you're a long-term investor, that is definitely not the way to go because sooner or later, paperwork gets examined. And if it's not right to begin with, then, you know, you're just going to get in trouble in a due diligence or, or whatever, you know, compliance audit comes up later. So there, there are a lot of traps for the unwary there, people who are, you know, tempted to easy way out. Sometimes the paperwork is daunting and it's, you know, it's needlessly so. You have to get, you know, notarized, consularized, legalized, translated, notarized again, you know, and it takes six weeks just to get a simple power of attorney over to your, to your representative here. But, you know, at the same time, you just got, you just got to do these things. And, and Vietnam's not the only country with a lot of red tape. So, you know, again, it goes back to the multinationals. They're pretty good at it. It's SMEs that, that really don't, you know, need the support. And frankly speaking, you know, Vietnam's always asking us, how can our SMEs get into the global supply chain better? And we're always saying, look, you know, make it easier for them to comply so that when we do the due diligence audits and the supplier audits, and, you know, they'll come up, you know, smelling roses as opposed to having all these issues. Yeah, fantastic. So in, in the last uh, 30 seconds or so, Fred, what do you love about living in Vietnam? Oh gosh, so many things. I mean, I'm looking out from my, my home and seeing the, the Saigon River and the green of, 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 of Honda Island beyond it. And it's it's a beautiful environment. You know, it's tropical, but at the same time, it's uh, got a mindset of 
of wanting to be very modern and very international, very open. So in the same neighborhood, you can go to any kind of restaurant you want from around the world. And people are extremely open-minded and friendly, always, you know, smile, get you a here. Um, and it's, uh, it's a very pleasant place to live. I think, you know, we're some, some challenges with the new work permit rules and stuff like that. But, but is there are a lot of foreigners and expats living here now. And a lot of them will tell you the same thing, that they just enjoy the people, the food, the climate, and uh, very happy to be here. Wonderful. We have a project with the Vietnamese government for capacity building and food safety, and I'm hoping to be back in Vietnam once COVID lets us. It's about two years behind uh, plan. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, folks, I should say, there you go. There you have it, all the way from Ho Chi Minh City. Fred Burke, the founder of uh, Baker McKenzie in Vietnam, in Vietnam for 30 years this year. Uh, Fred, thank you so much for sharing 10 minutes of wisdom with us. Thanks, John. See you later. Bye. Thank you.